with anti-aging medicine at the um, at A4M, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, and that's where uh, I actually met uh, Dr. Holtorf uh, a couple of, uh, several years ago. And uh, since that time, uh, I had got a real interest in this, um, you know, um, kind of I don't want to say anti-aging medicine, um, hormone, uh, you know, interested in uh, balancing uh, people's hormones, uh, because. For me, it uh, it helped me so much, and um, you know, this is just um, tonight. We're going to be talking. I'm going to be talking about testosterone, which is just one of the um, many things that we deal with here at the Holtorf Medical Group. Um, and then, uh, lastly, I, I opened up uh, Holtorf Medical Group in Pasadena um, last uh, July, July 2nd of um, of 2011, and have been practicing here since that time. And um, so that's just a little background on, on me. Um, and tonight we're going to be talking about testosterone. I assume that most people listening aren't um, doctors. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, so hopefully, you know, sometimes I'll stop and try to explain stuff and make it simple to understand because doctors always use like big words and a lot of jargon so they can sound smart. So I'll try to um, you know, not use a lot of technical terms and things. And I'm just going to briefly kind of go over what we're going to talk about testosterone. And, and obviously, you know, I think it's a good thing, testosterone replacement. And so we're going to talk about um, hypogonadism. Oh, that's something that's going to be used a lot, the word hypogonadism. And simply all that, you'll see that on the slides, and all that means is, you know, all we need to know is that it means low testosterone. And we're going to talk about um, why a little bit about why you know people have low testosterone, why men develop low testosterone, but predominantly, um, you know, men like women go through menopause. It's pretty obvious they stop ovulating and stop really making uh, their ovaries stop producing estrogen and uh, progesterone. But for, for males, it's a little, it's not quite so obvious, and it's a more gradual decline. And really, uh, it starts, it can start at, at as low as as young as age 30. And it kind of sneaks up on you. And, uh, you know, why is it bad? And we're going to talk a little bit about why it's bad. And low we're going to talk about how low testosterone is a risk for heart disease, that um, men with uh, low testosterone may be depressed and even treated with uh, antidepressants. And all it is is that their testosterone is low. They may have um, difficulty gaining muscle mass despite the fact that they're working out. They lose strength if, despite the fact they're working out, and they may get fat in the belly despite the fact that they're eating well and working out. Also, low testosterone, we're going to talk about how it's a, a risk for uh, a risk factor for uh, non insulin dependent diabetes development, insulin resistance, a uh, risk factor for uh, stroke and heart disease, uh, decreased libido, decreased erectile, erectile function, and um, decreased cognitive function. And then we're going to kind of uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about um, you know how we um, how we can replace it, the benefits of replacing it, and, um, and we're going to talk about um, testosterone replacement in women a little bit too. So um, I'll get going now. And um, so hypogonadism again, just low testosterone. And there was some uh, doctor, as you can see, Charles Brown Sicard injected testicular extracts from different animals. The guy had a lot of guts, and uh, evidently he, he reported that he had increased energy, muscle strength, stamina, mental agility. And then since that time, there's been many, many studies on, on um, testosterone and replacement. And so as you're talking about low testosterone levels, so hypogonadism is kind of a, it's a syndrome, both a, of a, a, a patient's um, or a person's um, clinical as well as lab, uh, clinical signs and symptoms as well as laboratory results. Just as I, I talked, all the, all the problems that are associated with low testosterone, diminished libido, decreased erectile function, low energy, low sense of well-being, um, kind of people, men become more timid, um, People are men are more fatigued, more moody and depressed. Decreased cognitive function, increased risk of uh, dementia, um, decreased muscle mass and strength, um, decreased bone density, frailty, obesity, insulin resistance. 
And so uh, just like women go through menopause, um, males go through uh, andropause, or I like to say menopause, and that's a um, kind of age-related decrease in testosterone that um, most men um, will go through as they age. And so now just to you know, give a little background is, you know, it's the Leydig cells of the, um, of the, um, in the testicles that produce testosterone. So if they're not producing testosterone, that may, that's called primary hypogonadism. Also, the Leydig cells uh, respond and produce testosterone in response to a hormone produced by the pituitary gland called um, luteinizing hormones. So if there's a inadequate pituitary stimulation, then that's secondary hypogonadism. Um, and so there's different reasons why we can have hypogonadism and, and a lot of uh, things in our environment, uh, polyphenols, PCBs, pesticides, also drugs, like narcotic, a lot of narcotic pain medicine. People are addicted to narcotics or use a lot of narcotic pain medicine will uh, tend to have a low testosterone. Also a testicular failure, but the one predominantly we're kind of thinking about most is aging. Also, systemic diseases such as diabetes and inflammation. And we're going to see that people, men with low testosterone levels are more prone to developing insulin resistance and diabetes. Also, inflammation, which is, um, is um, associated with increased risk factor for heart disease, for stroke, even for cancer. Um, and, and also, um, the other thing is, is that people with diabetes, men with diabetes, are found to have low testosterone. And so why, why, is, uh, why is it bad to have low testosterone? And, um, and the reason it, it, it seems to be um, bad or not kind of healthy to have low testosterone is because low testosterone levels are associated with um, poor uh, uh, lipid levels, like uh, hyperlipidemia. And so increased total cholesterol and triglycerides, but a decreased level of the good cholesterol, or HDL, that's, uh, low testosterone is associated with diabetes and obesity. And it's a kind of central obesity, the obesity in your you know, stomach that is, that's associated with inflammation. That's what's seen with people in, in people with low testosterone. And um, it's something that, you know, um, a lot of studies have looked at this and to diagnose um, low testosterone, they try to use a numbers. And so kind of, a, it, there's no really any number that's really agreed upon, but kind of one that a lot of people use is 300 nanograms per deciliter. And we're gonna talk about why, you know, using a total testosterone level two as the judge of low testosterone or hypogonadism isn't the best. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit later about how we need to look at free testosterone, that is that the testosterone that's bioavailable, as well as other um, indis, uh, other other lab tests like sex hormone binding globulin and dihydrotestosterone and estrogen. And here um, here's just again looking at um, diabetes and uh, low testosterone and that um, you know if you uh, are high, I have low testosterone, you're at more of a risk for having diabetes. And so again, andropause or menopause, as I like to call it, is uh, the age-related decline in testosterone and it's um, along with its uh, age-related symptoms. And, that's, and I think we're going to go over this a lot, uh, over and over, you're going to hear the same thing over and over again tonight, but again, low testosterone, uh, you have muscle loss, decreased strength and physical performance decreased bone density, so, and as you, as you see, you know, males as they age, and, and females as well, you know, they become frail and are at risk for uh, increasing risk. Uh, they become, well, they can become frail, they have uh, decreased cognitive function, um, their um, vision isn't great, and they're at risk for falls and hip fractures. And so, um, and that's, so that's kind of what you see with low testosterone. Also, the other thing is you have uh, insulin resistance, increased risk for metabolic syndrome. Um, males who have low testosterone uh, suffer from more mood disorders and depression, and again, oftentimes are treated to no avail with, uh, with um, uh, SSRIs and other antidepressants. Uh, also, the loss of erectile function and, and libido. 
And here you can see the age-related differences in testosterone in old men and, 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 and young men. And so, most, and so half the men between the ages of 50 and 70 are going to have low um, bioavailable, bioavailable testosterone, which just kind of lets you know how prevalent this is. And, um, and the thing about it is that, you know, it's something that's treatable. So it, it really, um, it's really hard to see people um, suffering from um, this uh, a disease, and it uh, can, can be treated. And by, you know, we're going to talk about a little bit later how by treating it, people can um, feel better, have, have more strength, um, better mood, better cognitive function, um, live longer, live longer in, in, in a healthy fashion. And so there's no reason in my mind not to, um, why people, why men shouldn't um, take advantage of this. Um, so and then here, um, so this is another graph showing how testosterone drops uh, free and total testosterone as we age. And so then another, so going back, as I, as I was talking about before, that there's an increased risk of heart disease, increased risk of, uh, of heart attacks, that's an MI, myocardial infarction, or heart attack. CVA is stroke, so there's increased risk of heart attack and stroke with low testosterone. There's decreased uh, cardiac blood flow. And um, actually, some studies have shown that testosterone given to men with low testosterone can help uh, dilate or increase the size of the coronary arteries, improving coronary blood flow. With low testosterone, there's uh, increased overall mortality and also that secondary to cardiovascular disease. Also, in men with uh, low testosterone, there seems to be a, a more of a propensity to dementia with decreased memory and decreased intelligence. So, and again, going over the symptoms, you know, tiredness, lethargy, increased body fat, body fat, especially that in the in the kind of the gut area, and that's the you know the the fat that's uh, surrounding the organs in the gut. That's a kind of a the fat that's uh, most associated with uh, inflammation, increased risk for insulin uh, resistance and diabetes, um, hyperlipidemia, heart attack, stroke. Um, again, decreased muscle mass and, mass and strength. Uh, depression, decreased sense of well-being, irritability, anxiety, decreased libido and er erectile dysfunction. Uh, men with low testosterone have difficulty handling stress. So giving testosterone, it's kind of like a, I don't know, kind of like, in a way, gives you gives a, a man uh, confidence, and it's kind of a, a hormone of confidence. Um, there's an increased risk for cardiovascular disease, increased risk of osteoporosis, and is and you know as you know that's a big topic too. It's with prostate cancer and, and and testosterone, and there's a, a kind of an erroneous belief uh, that's been um, perpetuated throughout the years based on. Um, an old study that um, says that prostate cancer is related to testosterone. And it turns out that actually many studies have shown that low testosterone is a risk for prostate cancer. And so again, as I said before, increased risk for insulin resistance and diabetes with uh, low testosterone. Um, and as I said before, uh, in andropause, it's kind of a less, uh, it's, it's more progressive uh, it's less sudden than in a female, but it says a lot. It's the same long-term consequences. And so, why do we uh, want to treat treat with testosterone? Uh, gives people, men, uh, a sen and women as well, an uh, improved sense of well-being and energy. Decreases the body fat and inflammation. Decreases the risk for heart disease. De you have increased uh, muscle mass and strength. Increased libido and uh, erectile function. Um, improved cardiac perfusion and decreased risk for cardiovascular disease, as, uh, as uh, mentioned before. Increased um, concentration and, and, and cognitive functioning, and an overall decrease in uh, mortality. And so there's a, a bunch of studies we're going to go through. We don't have to uh, spend a lot of time on them, um, but they're going to um, all be saying a lot of things that we've said before. And so here's a, a study looking at uh, men who are treated with uh, testosterone and uh, 
and a, a group that were treated uh, were controlled a control group um, treated with placebo. And this this particular study, they did not exercise, and it showed that the testosterone replacement was safe, and they had improved sexual enjoyment and function. They were able to get an erection. Their mood was better. They had increased muscle strength, increased lean muscle mass, um, able to, um, and and it was uh, directly correlated to the um, level of testosterone. And here's a kind of a little graph showing that um, men that don't exercise or people with and with testosterone replacement even have increased strength and muscle mass. But if men were to exercise, then they'd even have an inc a, a bigger increase in strength and in muscle mass as well. And so that's kind of where uh, the real benefit of testosterone is uh, is felt too, is in people that exercise can have really uh, enhanced performance. And this is kind of just going over the same thing again. And so, uh, so it's not only that um, um, it, it increases libido and, and erectile function by replacing testosterone, but also um, um, orgasms are, uh, are are better, and uh, and life is just better if that if that's the case. Um, yeah, so it increased sexual satisfaction, and also uh, it helps uh, with. Uh, the PDE5 inhibitor, the phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor, inhibitors like um, Cialis and Viagra. And so, and those, you know, people use for erectile dysfunction, but there's nothing for libido. And, uh, but uh, testosterone does. And so here's a study looking at a control group using uh, a, uh, a placebo and uh, had no improve, in, improvement of their libido after um, being on testosterone for two years. But this, um, but uh, overwhelming majority of the, of the men who were placed on testosterone had a, a great increase, uh, improvement of their libido and sexual function. And so uh, it also shows that in, uh, just like in females, uh, by replacing estrogen in, in postmenopausal females, it helps uh, memory and cognitive function. Replacing testosterone in, in, um, in um, uh, males with low testosterone in, in increases their uh, uh, working memory. It improves uh, it improves their mood. And actually, a study showed that uh, males who were treated with antidepressants, elder or older males uh, who were treated with antidepressants without any uh, with low testosterone, when they replaced their testosterone, that they were actually able to be taken off their uh, antidepressant drugs. Um, again, you know, kind of like uh, you, that movie, Grumpy Old Men, you know, they're the old men kind of fatter on the belly and grumpy. Uh, that's low testosterone. Low testosterone is uh, associated with fatigue um, and uh, uh, depression, and re by replacing it, we have men have more energy, a better sense of well-being, less depression, more energy. Um, just uh, here's another. Um, uh, they uh, did a meta-analysis of these different studies, showing overall that um, um, by replacing testosterone overwhelmingly, there's a, a better um, change in mood. And so. Again, you know, testosterone by replacing it increases a. Or increases of cognitive function. It's associated with improvement in uh, cognitive function and memory, especially, uh, especially visual spatial um, functioning, which is uh, functioning uh, is, is depth perception, um, kind of visualizing things in your mind in three dimensions and being able to turn it, being able to figure out you know how to go get somewhere uh, on a map. All these are uh, improved uh, in men uh, on testosterone. Also, it's, it, it, testosterone has shown to be beneficial in, even in men with Alzheimer's disease, that after a treatment of, of males, uh, older ad adult males with Alzheimer's disease, that their overall quality of life was improved. And they um, also even had an increase 
the cognitive function, especially, as I said before, the visual spatial functions. It also uh, helps uh, decrease the um, production of beta amylo amyloid protein, which is associated with the amyloid plaques that um, are associated with uh, Alzheimer's disease. Um, again, you know, testosterone and decreases the risk for cardiovascular disease. Uh, it, and there's a study that shows that, um, I don't know if you guys know how the um, NEKG, you know, looks an electrocardiogram is a kind of a, a electro uh, a measurement of the heart. And there's something called ST depression, which is a a change on an EKG that's associated with uh, ischemia, or that's a decreased blood flow to the heart. And they were they, a study showed that actually in, in males with uh, known coronary artery disease who would get chest pain with exercise, by giving them uh, testosterone, they were actually able to do more exercise before getting chest pain. So it actually, and, and they were had a 22% improvement in exercise time before the onset of ST depression or cardiac ischemia. So it seems as though not only does uh, testosterone replacement help uh, improve the lipid profile, decrease the risk, risk of insulin resistance and inflammation, thereby in, improving um, cardiac function, but it also seems to have another effect, and it, it seems like it may actually open up or kind of dilate the uh, coronary arteries, helping improve uh, cardiac blood flow. And so, again, talking about the uh, visceral adiposity, uh, the, that kind of that gut fat that you've seen with, uh, in men with low testosterone, which is associated with um, inflammation. Um, insulin resistance, um, a, a poor uh, a cholesterol profile, and increased risk for heart disease and stroke and cancer. Um, but men on testosterone replacement also has a, a, have a decrease in that visceral adiposity, and thereby decreasing cardiovascular risk and increasing lean muscle mass. And this is what we just talked about a little bit earlier, how testosterone can, seems to uh, help dilate coronary arteries. And then um, not even taking into consideration adiposity, you know, and that, that's kind of that belly fat, but just low testosterone in general as a risk factor for insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. And also in men with type 2 diabetes, they're found to have low testosterone. So, so simply by uh, improving our testosterone level in a hypogonadal male by bringing your testosterone from maybe a low quote unquote normal level to a high normal level can de decrease the risk for heart disease by 60%. And so a study um, evaluating men with heart disease. So men with CAD, that is coronary artery disease, have significantly lower um, free testosterone, total testosterone, and bioavailable testosterone. And, and it is, seems to be a, a, a direct relationship. The lower the testosterone, the more heart disease. And the higher, the less heart disease. And just in, and here's a study looking at overall causes of mortality, not, not just heart disease. And just low testosterone um, have a increase a risk for death, or will die, I should say, will die sooner than um, males uh, with a high testosterone. So a risk factor for death is low testosterone. Again, same thing, decreased testosterone, increased risk of death. Same thing here. And so males with low testosterone, as we age, we, can, we become more frail. And our muscles waste, and we become what's called sarcopenia. Our bones become less dense. We are, have more re fatigue. And then as we learn, we have a visuospatial uh, deficit, uh, d defects. We're not able to really d perceive depth as well. And we have a, um, cognitive, impairments, cognitive impairments, reduced function and mobility, and so we have a risk 
uh, increased risk of falls, hip fractures, or, or worse, and then uh, death. So the idea is that, you know, at, around uh, the age of uh, maybe 50, you know, we're doing well up to the age of 50, and then we kind of start uh, dwindling away until we kind of, uh, you know, just uh, kind of go out with a little puff of smoke after we've kind of just declined over the last over the last uh, 30 or 40 years. And um, and whereas we have the opportunity now, um, because with low testosterone can easily be re replaced, reversing uh, weakness, improving muscle mass, improving uh, cognitive uh, function, improving mood, uh, helping us helping us to enjoy our life. And uh, of course, we one day we're going to have to die, but we won't have to like dwindle away to nothing. But we can live a full, uh, kind of a ha healthy, uh, happy life until it's our time to go. So there's studies that show that uh, men um, who were in convalescent homes and uh, were given testosterone and it helped to improve uh, muscle mass and uh, kind of decrease, uh, uh, improve frailty um, as well. And I don't know how many times I have to tell you, I hope you're starting to understand that by um, replacing uh, low testosterone, um, we decrease the risk of insulin resistance in males and decrease the uh, risk of type 2 diabetes, increase the risk of heart disease. So now we answer the question, are there any risks associated with testosterone replacement? So we're going to know that we're going to, there was a, a lot of, uh, you know, people thought previously that high testosterone was associated with heart disease because men seem to get heart disease more frequently and easier than women. And so they just assumed that it was associated with that. But now we know that high uh, improving our testosterone decreases the risk of cardio cardiovascular disease. We've learned that it increases our, our lipid profile. It, it decreases the bad, uh, replacing testosterone decreases the bad cholesterol and increases the good um, cholesterol. There is um, also something we can get, a re um, there is a risk of erythrocytosis, which is um, increasing red blood cells, so increasing hemoglobin in the hematocrit with um, testosterone replacement. It's uh, worse in those with uh, sleep apnea or people who smoke. And simply, um, you know, it just needs that your um, complete blood count or your hemoglobin hematocrit needs to be monitored every six to nine months. And if it gets too high, you can, you know, just donate a little blood. Um, there's a risk of fluid retention with testosterone replacement, but this is usually uh, usually due to um, the production of estrogen um, because. Um, testosterone gets metabolized by a process called aromatization to estrogen. It also gets metabolized to dihydrotestosterone. So that's why we um, really close in people on, with uh, men and, and women with testosterone replacement, we closely monitor um, uh, estrogen levels. Um, also, uh, there's a, a risk for benign uh, uh, BPH or, or pr prosthetic hy hypertrophy, benign prosthetic hypertrophy, secondary, again, to probably estrogens. Um, again, as we talked before, that actually uh, low testosterone is more of a risk factor for, for prostate cancer, and high testosterone decreases the risk. There's also a risk of hair loss um, or male pattern balding, and usually it's secondary to uh, dihydrotestosterone. And as I mentioned, testosterone gets metabolized to dihydrotestosterone, and it um, and so that can be, we, so we watch the dihydrotestosterone levels to make sure they don't get too high. And if they, and, and there's uh, medications called 5-alpha reductase inhibitors uh, that, um, such as Flomax that can be used or, or uh, natural ones like saw palmetto, even uh, progesterone that can be used to help decrease the uh, conversion of uh, testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. You don't want to really give, uh, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary, testosterone to uh, children um, because it can cause a, a decreased uh, uh, height or stature. And it's because, uh, um, as a, because testosterone gets metabolized to estrogen, and estrogen can uh, cause the growth plates to close, close premature, 
prematurely um, giving um, boys a shorter stature. And people always talk about, or I always hear people going, well, what about my liver? You know, am I going to have liver damage from using testosterone? Well, um, testosterone isn't really hepatotoxic, but a lot of the, um, the steroids that damage liver were taken orally, and they were usually synthetic agents uh, that um, were used by bodybuilders previously. And these aren't things that we really use. Um, testosterone can increase the risk for sleep apnea, uh, but it's, it's rare. Also, uh, uh, men uh, can grow breasts with testosterone replacement called gynecomastia if we don't uh, keep an eye on the estrogen levels. And so some people have a high incidence of uh, skin reactions, usually especially with the patch, um, sometimes with the gel. Um, there's a risk for acne and oily skin. Um, typically, if you're too high of a dose or if the hydrotestosterone lo levels get too high. Um, there are also uh, the testicles will atrophy some because uh, when you give exogenous or replacement testosterone, uh, the testicles, you know, the Leydig cells don't uh, no longer produce testosterone, so they do uh, shrink a little bit. Uh, most men uh, don't care; it doesn't really bother them much. There is also a risk for infertility, and it's kind of this could be used actually as male birth control. Both the testicular atrophy and infertility are reversible with sensation of the treatment after several months. Other, other ways you can um, circumvent the testicular atrophy or infertility is, with testosterone replacement is by using um, uh, HCG. So again, we talked about the risk, you know, there, there's a perceived risk of increased risk of prostate cancer with testosterone. Um, based on a, a study, uh, one study, and um, and so now um, other studies have shown that dihydrotestosterone and testosterone levels are lower in people with prostate cancer, and that um, the PSA and, and dihydrotestosterone there's an inverse relationship. So as dihydrotestosterone goes up, PSA goes down. So it, it, it appears that uh, that testosterone is not uh, associated with an increased risk for prostate cancer, and even it may even be associated with a decreased risk. There's never been a study that's shown a correlation between um, high testosterone levels and prostate cancer. And here's a a study uh, of, out of Harvard in 2007, and I'll just say that um, um, so the withholding of testosterone replacement therapy in men because of fear of uh, prostate cancer risk or progression is no longer tenable in an age of evidence-based medicine because neither evidence nor theory supports this position. So that's a pretty strong statement. Well, a study showed that um, dieter testosterone actually reduced prostate size. And there's an interesting study, uh, HCG, or human chorionic gonadotrophin, that's the um, a hormone that's elevated with um, pregnancy. And it also looks as though by giving um, uh, doses of HCG will uh, posit uh, posit positively affect um, a, a benign prostatic hypertrophy symptoms. So it actually tends to shrink the prostate. So that's kind of interesting. So um, how do we diagnose hypogonadism? And so this is a, I don't know, a lot of time, but, you know, so, you know, I, I've heard the people, they go to see their doctor and they, t they you know, men, they go, you know, I have uh, no sexual uh, desire. I can't have, get an erection. I, uh, I don't gain muscle mass despite the fact that I exercise all the time. I eat right, I exercise, and I'm getting fat in, the, in my belly. I feel depressed. And then, you know, they'll, they'll check their total testosterone level, and it's 350, and they go, well, you know, your testosterone's fine. You're just getting old. And, you know, that, I think that you can't use a number. You know, a number, um, 
is not, you know, as always, we always taught in, in, in medical school, you don't treat the number, you treat the patient. And if a male's uh, exhibiting um, signs and symptoms of low testosterone, just even despite what their number is, uh, they can benefit from at least a trial of testosterone therapy. Um, because we never know what their optimum level was when they were younger. It, you know, it could have been 1,100, it could be 1,000, and now it's 500, it might be low for them. And so, but... So, you know, we know the symptoms of, of, of low testosterone. And so that's kind of, to me, the most important thing to see if somebody uh, needs treatment. Of course, we do uh, need to check. We do check blood levels. But there is no real agreed upon uh, levels, as you saw. Some use 200 uh, as a cutoff. Some 300 is 350. Um, but you know, total testosterone is not a good a good uh, measurement to use anyway, because if you're talking about um, a lot of the, most of the testosterone, is in fact, is bound to um, proteins that m render it bio unavailable, um, and so a, a better measurement would be free testosterone or bioavailable testosterone. And so to, to go over any kind of the um, 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 biophys the biophysiology of it, uh, most, uh, there's a sex hormone binding globulin which actually uh, tightly binds testosterone and, uh, and carries it throughout the body and, and kind of stores it. But when, and the rest of the test, a lot of the testosterone also is loosely, more, more loosely bound to albumin, which is a protein found in the blood. So a, a small percentage, less than 5%, is, um, is unbound and bioavailable. And so what we need to really look at is not only the total testosterone, but the sex hormone binding globulin and the free testosterone. There's a little diagram showing that. Um, And then this is the last slide just showed that even, even the results from different laboratories are, are very, uh, very widely. So, you know, to me, you know, the numbers we you know we have to get the numbers we need to know uh, where we're, where we're starting and uh, that way we can uh, find out you know where where we're going but that's really not the important thing what's important is 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 the, the symptoms the signs and symptoms of the uh, person that's uh, coming to get the treatment and so so basically, it would be good to be able to know the uh, testosterone levels when the patient was younger. That's often not something that we can get. Okay, and so here's a, here's a, and this is a, a chart showing how the, um, testosterone has decreased over the years, um, maybe due to environmental environmental pollutants. Um, different medications we're taking. And as we talked about before, that you know, all, the, all the increased risk for um, 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 diseases with low testosterone, the testosterone levels decreased with age. And, um, and then also um, that there's increased um, estro aromatization or estrogen produced as we age as well, which um, leads to also um, increased risk of adiposity, decreased libido, decreased muscle strength. So by um, um, replacing uh, testosterone in a hypogonadal male, we have increased muscle mass, improved energy, increased, increased libido, increased motivation, as we've gone through before. And there's many ways to, uh, to um, replace testosterone. Um, you can use Androgel, which is a prescription. It's pretty weak. You need to put a very a lot on to get uh, results. It can also uh, be done in patches. It can be um, compounded, so it's a little more concentrated in creams or gels. And with the, the problem with the things that the, the um, forms of testosterone you place on your skin is that sometimes it's kind of hard to get uh, the level up as high as you'd like it. Um, there's um, absorption differences, if it's not rubbed in well, and it's, it's kind of less reliable. Uh, a, a way of, uh, another way of uh, replacing testosterone is injections. It can be intramuscular once a week, once every two weeks. You can do subcutaneous 
daily or every other day. And then there's um, pellets that can be um, um, placed under the skin. And the pellets, the beauty of that is that it's a small procedure. It takes about 10 minutes, and then they are under the skin and release testosterone for the next um, three to five months, depending on how fast um, the testosterone is metabolized. So you don't have to deal with shots or rubbing creams on. And so these are some um, basic kind of doses that you may start out with. Oh, I didn't mention this also. There's trochies or um, kind of uh, little pills or that, that dissolve in, in the mouth in, um, between in the mucous membranes, and testosterone can be uh, taken in that way as well. Other, other types of, uh, there are also um, non, uh, there are uh, types of uh, testosterone that are not uh, metabolized into um, estrogen that can be used. And in other ways, you can use um, human chorionic gonadotropin, which is, again, the a pregnancy hormone, can be used as well. Um, and um, usually um, around two to three to 10,000 uh, units a week can be used. It's a sub-2 injection, and that helps um, stimulate the Leydig cells and the testicles to produce their own testosterone. So that's kind of um, getting your own body to produce the testosterone. And then these type of uh, Clomid or um, a, a selective estrogen receptor blocker uh, also is another way to get your body to produce its own testosterone. And so the, the, the goal of treatment is to keep testosterone levels in the, kind of the high normal range. So here this is about a 700 to a 1,100. Um, we need to monitor closely for side effects, such as um, you know, the gynecomastia or you know, breast growth. Um, we need to make sure you know, for, watch for hair loss, um, signs of uh, prostatic hypertrophy. We need to check the PSA levels every, um, every six to nine months. And, um, and monitor labs looking at, looking at uh, for elevated estrogen, dihydrotestosterone um, levels. And so we already talked about free versus total. Um, I might mention that there's also a decreased receptor sensitivity, so kind of ins uh, testosterone resistance that, uh, that gets uh, worse with age. And so... So we talked about the PSA. This talks about just a slight uh, bump in the uh, PSA isn't something that's concerning, but more of a kind of the, the rate of change. And if it, if it, uh, PSA goes up by more than 0.35 to 0.05 nanograms per milliliter a year, then it should be referred to a urologist. Other things we need to monitor is the CBC for um, uh, erythrocytosis or increasing hemoglobin hematocrit. And then we can just give uh, blood if it gets high. Um, we talked about this, monitoring estradiol. Um, we, we, and, to, and these are ways we can reduce it. We could reduce the testosterone dose, or we could add an aromatase inhibitor, uh, such as a Rimidex, or a natural one, chrysin, quercetin. Uh, progesterone can be helpful, or we can use a non uh, aromatizable testosterone, such as nandrolone. Um, we already talked about this to help prevent the um, conversion to dihydrotestosterone, and um, these are some of the 5-alpha um, um, reductase inhibitors, avodart, sinasteride, and then saw palmetto, which is a natural um, um, product or a plant-derived, uh, uh, an herb that can be helpful for re reducing uh, BPH. Um, there's also um, a, a, a product that's a, um, made, made at, uh, or that we use at the Holtorf Medical Group. It's called Prostate Support. That has a, it's a nutraceutical that has saw palmetto that's helpful for, um, um, for this. Um, and this is a case study. I don't think I need to go through all this. And then, basically, so you know, in summary, uh, you know, testosterone is great. If your testosterone is low, you should replace it. It'll help your mood, your energy, libido, help you enjoy life more, um, increase muscle mass, strength, muscle strength, motivation. It'll reduce heart disease, disease, brain aging, reduce the risk of diabetes, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, prostate cancer, and reduce your body fat. 
And then briefly, uh, testosterone can be used for women. Just like men, you know, men, we need a little bit of estrogen. Women need a little testosterone. And so testosterone is, for men, can be um, a real aphrodisiac. So uh, oftentimes as women age, they lose their libido. And so by replacing testosterone, it can really be helpful for this. It can also be helpful for, um, you know, muscle mass and energy. Uh, again, a sense of well-being, strength, uh, more um, kind of uh, uh, sensitivity, and impre- increased bone density and increased lean muscle mass. So, um, so um, testosterone can be really beneficial when used with um, um, estrogen replacement as well, and increase in case it can help increase the um, lean body mass. Um, so, basically, I'm kind of running out of time, so I want to give enough time for. Um, um, questions, but I just want to say that um, the doses of testosterone for women are much um, much smaller uh, for than for men. And again, it can be a trochee that dissolves in the mouth. Um, otherwise, you can use a cream or a gel. Also, it can have um, um, pellets implanted under the skin or injections. So I hope that was um, um, informative. And I want to really thank you all for um, listening. And with that, that, I have... We have lots of questions for you. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, One guest would like to know if testosterone can help with sleep. With sleep? Yes. Um, It seems as though... um, I don't know of any studies, but it it certainly can... uh, affect dreaming, and, and men who take testosterone seem to have more, uh, uh, remember their dreams and have more vivid dreams. Um, my own kind of personal feeling about it is that um, it seems to, it does seem to work with uh, all the hormones together to help improve, uh, um, just kind of improve the quality of life, and um, and so I would assume it, it could be beneficial to sleep, but I can't give, I, I don't know of a study that, that shows that it is. Specifically, okay. And um, Ray would like to know um, if he he was getting shots every two weeks, but his red blood cell count became high, and he had to reduce the frequency of shots, and ED became severe. What would you say a solution to that problem would be? His 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 what? Be his what, so his hemoglobin and hematocrit were were very high. His red blood cell count yeah. became very high, and he had to reduce the frequency, and then suffered from ED. Well, why? I wonder why he, he, you know, he could go donate blood or, you know, you know, get rid of, um, you know, a pint of, or two of blood every every year might be helpful for uh, getting around that problem. Okay. And um, Keith would like to know: Should HCG be used with testosterone or in place of testosterone? Um, HCG can be used. Um, in place of testosterone, so especially for maybe younger males who maybe have a lowish testosterone or you know effects of low testosterone, who were interested in having children, they could use HCG by itself to um, help improve their testosterone levels, and you know start out on something like uh, 2,000 units a week or two to 3,000 and you could go up as high as 10,000 and then just see if that was affected by itself. And you can also use HCG in conjunction with testosterone. So in in males, so there uh, was a study uh, that showed that males who were on testosterone and had, um, who were, had decreased sperm production or were infertile because of it were able to um, get a uh, become fertile again by taking uh, test, uh, HCG injections along with the testosterone. So it can, it can be um, done both ways. Okay. And Keith would like to know if, um, if having low testosterone can affect or, a, or be a reason to have the dr- estradiol would be elevated. Oh, could you repeat that once more? Okay. Oh, yeah. He'd like to know if elevated 
estradiol has something to do with the, uh, having a low level, level of testosterone? Well, um, uh, in, in especially in, um, so as males age, and, and then if, especially with insulin resistance and increased uh, adiposity, especially that, you know, that belly fat uh, that men with a big belly have, there uh, is increased aromatization, uh, and, incre- and they seem to have increased um, estrogen levels. Um, so it, it seems, uh, it, so, and I guess you could say that decreased testosterone levels uh, are a risk factor for that central adiposity, and so I guess you could say that in a way, yes. And a patient would like to know that she um, she's a patient and she takes testosterone and trochies. What is the best way for men to take it? Um, you know, it really depends on on the man, and um, most most men you know, like to get uh, an injection is probably the uh, biggest bang for the buck. And uh, it's probably a lot, it's a lot uh, better absorbed. You can get higher levels typically than with the uh, uh, gels. But another uh, really great way as well are the uh, testosterone pellets because, uh, you know, they implant under the skin. It's, it's a really simple procedure. And then that, keeps, that can keep your uh, testosterone levels at a, a high level um, for about three to five months. Uh, depending on how fast you metabolize it, and you don't have to worry about it after after they're implanted, and you don't have to get you know shots shots every week or every two weeks if 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 you don't like that. Okay, and Neil would like to know if you take progesterone along with testosterone, does that prevent the co- conversion of testosterone to estrogen and dihydrotestosterone? Uh, it 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 yes, it can be helpful for that. Yes. And, and uh, progesterone can be, you know, good for men to take too because it's uh, protective and calming, and uh, and then it does help prevent the conversion of testosterone to uh, the um, dihydrotestosterone. Okay. And Linda says, per her husband, once you start testosterone, do you have to always be on it, or does it, does your body become immune to taking it or using it after a, a period of time? Uh, so, you know, most men, when they, they take uh, testosterone, is because their levels are low to begin with. And so, you know, probably, you know, you wouldn't have to take it all the time, but then when you didn't take it, your testosterone levels would be low, so you wouldn't feel great. And so people who, you know, take it, you know, let's say, you know, older men, as they go, they go through endoprose, and their testosterone levels are low, and they're suffering all the effects. When they start taking it, they feel great, and so they don't want to stop because they don't like the way they feel when they stop. So, you know, people would probably take it for forever. Um, would they have to? No. Now, if if you were, let's say, you su- suppressed your own testosterone level and it, um, by taking testosterone, and when you stop taking it, it takes a while for it to come back. But again, if it was inadequate production a- at the beginning, it, you know, it it would never probably it would never you know go become more than that, and and you don't really become uh, so testosterone is um, you know produced by the Leydig cells and the testicles, so they're it's a it's produced by the body, and so the testosterone that's given. Uh, that we use is um, bioidentical, so it's the exact same uh, molecule as the testosterone produced by your body. And so you don't uh, become, um, and I, did you say, like immune to it any more than you, you would to your own body's testosterone. Did I answer that question? Yes, you did. <laughs> you did. Okay, Linda would like to know, do men and women have the same symptoms when they have low testosterone? Um, well. Uh, women, you know, can have a decreased libido, and testosterone can help it. But it's uh, there, you know, kind of in a way, estrogen is to women what testosterone is to men, kind of. And so, um, by in, so a woman could have, you know, a little decreased energy and and strength and and libido. Um, 
but they wouldn't testosterone have a, such a dramatic effect as far as I know or studies have shown on let's say risk for diabetes risk for heart disease risk for stroke whereas S by replacing estrogen in postmenopausal females decreases the risk for heart disease uh, decreases the risk for stroke increases mental function and uh, in, you know kind of makes women look younger um, so I don't think there's a, a direct correlation however by um, enhancing the testosterone in women, they can um, experience a lot of uh, benefits, kind of similar to men. But does that make sense? Can I? Yes. Okay. Along that same line of question, Linda wanted to know if you can mistake low, low testosterone for something else. And I think what she's asking is, can if you have this, if you have low testosterone and you're you have these symptoms, if you went to your regular doctor, would they might they say it's something else and try to give you other medications for it? Yeah, so I mean, what happens is, you know, men, you know, I mean, I'll just tell you, you know, I just don't go by the, the numbers so much as I do by the, the symptoms. And I had this guy, he came in and he, you know, his testosterone levels, I think were like 550. But he's telling me, you know, he, he's working out and he's not gaining any muscle. He's getting weaker despite working out. He works out and he eats right and he's getting you know, this adiposity, you know, that he's getting fat. He's having a hard time getting, getting and maintaining an erection. He's lost his libido, and he's lost his drive, and he's, a, he's an ex executive. He's like a CFO. And his testosterone levels were not low but, uh, numerically. And had he gone to, you know, a doctor, I'd, I can only guess that they go, you know, your testosterone levels are fine, and, you know, you're just probably a little depressed, and we'll put you on a... a you know, Zoloft or Paxil or whatever, and, um, you know, you're just getting old, you know. And, but this guy, you know, I, I, I started him on a little testosterone, and it was amazing. He was completely transformed. He uh, actually, you know, I saw him a couple months later, and I didn't even, like, recognize him. He uh, was beaming. He was, he was happy. He had lost, he had gained lean muscle mass, you know, and and so um, to answer your question, yeah, I could be diagnosed, people would diagnose him with depression and wouldn't treat, um, you know, his symptoms, which seemed to, to me go along with low testosterone. And so I think that's in a way how um, we differ too at, at the Holtorf Medical Group in that, you know, we don't kind of uh, just kind of treat numbers, but we, um, like to look at you know the patient's symptoms and and look at them in 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 the kind of the context of balancing hormones. Great. And um, Larry would like to know what is the best way to stop the aromatase effect. And so um, there's a couple ways. So if you're on you know testosterone, it can get aromatized to estrogen. So you can use a type of testosterone that does not get a, aromatized to estrogen, which is called nandrolone, and you can um, mix that in like a 50-50 um, mixture with a testosterone and nandrolone. Other ways are the, um, you know, like a Rimidex, a aromatase inhibitor, and then um, another uh, effective way is um, using um, chrysin, which is a, a kind of a natural aromatase inhibitor. Okay, and Keith would like to know what's the most effective way to deliver a balanced dose of testosterone? Again, um, probably I would think um, by doing the shots. So you can do uh, a shot, and I think probably once a week is going to be better than twice a week because uh, um, it starts dwindling away uh, after testosterone starts kind of really decreasing after two weeks, and so. Um, by doing it once a week, you can keep the levels up, um, kind of at a at a at a good at a at a single level, and without having the real the real peaks and troughs. Um, but another real effective way are the uh, testosterone pellets, uh, as well. Uh, also, um, you can do like little sub uh, subcutaneous injections um, with testosterone, like daily as well, and that's another uh, a good way. 
Okay, we're getting close to the cutoff time, but we do have one more question. Actually, is this this is a vitamin D question? If you're up to that, Dr. Starrett. Okay. <laughs> um, Bill would like to know is what does the vitamin D and 25 hydroxy test mean? I'm showing 26 on a standard range of 20 to 30 to 100. Okay. Uh, could you could you repeat that one, Sarah? What does vitamin D and 25 hydroxy vitamin D test mean? I'm showing 26 in a standard range range of 30 to 100. Yeah, so that's um, you know the standard range. Um, oh, thank you. Um, so you know the standard range 30 to 100. Um, but uh, studies have actually shown that, um, and you know I went to uh, see a talk. Uh, you know, vitamin D has become really uh, popular. And uh, the talk said that um, above, the, um, the, um, above 60, um, there would be a dramatic decrease in cancer more than if everyone quit smoking. And so um, basically the kind of the, the standard, the range of 30 to 100 really should be the 60 to 100. And so in very few people, you know, get enough sunlight to have uh, high enough vitamin D levels, and basically you need to be like a lifeguard um, at the beach all day. And so by um, supplementing your testosterone, your, your vitamin D levels, you can get them up to around uh, above 60, and that would be a good range for, um, and it's helpful for your immune function, you know, of course bone density, and uh, it's, a, it, it's a risk, uh, it reduces the risk for uh, many types of different cancers. And and so, and typically, you know, people are on, on high enough doses, and it's, it's an effective dose seems to be about 5,000 to 10,000 um, units a day, in my opinion. Okay. Dr. Starrett, that does wrap up our questions for you for this evening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank everybody for joining us and let you know that we will have um, the webinar posted on the website tomorrow on holtorfmed.com. If you're interested in seeing Dr. Sterrett, please give us a call. He'd be happy to see you and, and as our expert on testosterone therapy. I want to thank you all for joining us on our series of webinars. We will have one. Um, thanks, Keith gave Dr. Sterrett a big applause. We will be having one next month, and that will be posted on our website in the next few days. Thank you for joining us.